Hi friends, Max Alash here. On this episode of the podcast, we have our first non-TTT guest, James Townsend. He was an All-American high school sprinter, football player, went on to play football at Iowa as a wide receiver, played one year in the NFL, was on a grid team. He also happens to be Mal O'Brien's coach, who's a young phenom athlete in CrossFit, and we talk about all the things. All the things. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're on our road to 35K subscribers. And when we hit that milestone, we're going to give away a Black Zinc Rogue 2.0 barbell. Leave a comment below telling us what your favorite part of this podcast was. That comment is what's going to enter you into the giveaway. Once we reach that 35,000 subscriber milestone, we'll use a random YouTube comment generator on one of these videos where we promoted the giveaway to draw a worldwide winner for that bar. So all you got to do is be subscribed and comment below to enter train along some of the best athletes in the world at the sport of CrossFit. To get a free sample week of our current training cycle, head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN. So I don't know that much about you, but a couple, probably a couple months ago, sometime over the course of quarantine, a video popped up of you with your daughter and you were training her and you were so overwhelmingly positive and enthusiastic and the way that you used your words to inspire her to, I think she was like, she had just failed or she was crying or something. And you were kind of like, uh, you were just being a good dad and a good coach all in once. And I remember seeing it thinking to myself, this is an opportunity for me to really self-reflect, to become a better coach and use my words better and think about how I communicate messages when people fail or when I'm trying to uplift people. So first of all, I'm a fan just from that because uh, you, without, man. without all the other athletic stuff and accomplishments, I do want to hear your story, but that was, uh, inspiring to me. I think seeing, first of all, just good fathers invest in their kids is something that I always appreciate. And then seeing kind of what that potential next generation of human is going to be like, who has guidance in physical stuff in mental stuff. So it was cool to see that. And you've already made me a better coach and person before we started the podcast. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Man. All right. Thank so, you. so, uh, Let's start just because the most obvious thing is that you're a super talented athlete. I've seen videos of you after just doing a little bit of digging of you doing a bunch of high level world-class Olympic lifting stuff. You also have a background that I just heard of, of being a division one football player at Iowa, a short stint in the NFL. So I kind of want to just get through the athletic side and then kind of transition to hear some of your philosophies of coaching that we can kind of share stuff outside of TTT. Mm -hmm. So where did, where did it all start? When did you get into athletics? Oh, man. Um, dang, I want to say, um, well, my brothers got me into it. Um, now the age of three. You're youngest? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm the youngest. Youngest of four. You get beat up a lot when you're that age? Or are um, they nicer? Nah, nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not even going to lie. Yeah. yeah. I got so, picked on a little bit. You know, um, by me being the youngest, um, my uncle was a black belt in jujitsu and kickboxing. Oh, nice. And so, you know, being the youngest, my olders didn't want to do the stuff with him. Got it. I was the one who always wanted to be active and do the stuff with him. And so, um, you know, growing up in the Bronx, you know, we, we were limited to doing a lot of things. So we had to use our, you know, imaginations. Yeah, on, on creativity. So we raced a lot. Yeah. So my brothers would bet on me as a three, four year old that I would beat their friends. And mind you, my brothers are four or five years older than me. Yeah. And I would beat them. <laughs> really? And so that's when the legend of James Townsend started. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know and you then came out with wheels. Came out with wheels. <laughs> nice. And then um, you know, made my name in uh Little League football. And then it, you know, um had eighty two touchdowns. Nice. In Little League and you know, growing up in South Jersey. Yeah. Um so you grew up in the Bronx. When did you, did you move to South Jersey yeah, at some moved, point? Moved to South Jersey at the age of 10. Okay. And then, um, that's where, you know, football just, just became something. You yeah. Know, my mom didn't want me to play at first because, you know, violence. get hurt. Yeah. Know, violence. But I was like, mom, I'm good. I'm fast. <laughs> like, I'm really this is what fast. I'm built to do. Right. And then, yeah. you know, I had, I had to get my brothers to convince her. Yeah. And then, you know, one day we got out there and got the pads on and I remember getting a toss. It was slot right 48 pitch. <laughs> uh, you remember it. I remember <laughs> it. <And> then, <laughs> you know, yeah. the legend just yeah. continued to grow. And then yeah. I into high school, became an All-American in track and 
Football as a wide receiver. What was your distance in, in track? 100 and 200. And what were your best times? Uh, 10 to 9 and um, 20.9. That is so fast. I wish people could have a context for how much faster that is than just like an average fit person running on a track. You'd be beating people who are really fit by 15 or 20 yards. Yeah. And yeah. the thing about it is that like, you know, growing up in on the East Coast, you know, you have your seasons. Yeah. And so, you know, during... Now, our track season was starting like March. Yeah. Your times are not that good in March. Yeah. Like as somebody that's in Texas or Florida where weather is in California where yeah. weather is good all year round and they're running 10 twos at the start of March. Yeah. Cause they're on the track all year. Right. Then the winter, you can't be running like that. No. Yeah. You know, you gotta, <laughs> your, your, your times <laughs> don't come until like May. Yeah. Yeah. You know, around pen relays or something. Yeah. You know, and so, um, so yeah. So like, you know, growing up, um, Carl Lewis was the the man in, in Jersey. The like idol. His time. Yeah. You know, because he was from Willingboro, where where I was living at, in yeah. South Jersey. And so, and then I was able to break his record. Awesome. You know, and uh, yeah, so so became an All-American in track and in football. And yeah. And accepted a full ride to University of Iowa. Started as a true freshman. Awesome. Wide receiver. Why did, did you choose track over football or sorry, football over track? Did yeah. you go there to do both or track? You know, track was just long. It was mm. like, like, you know, the high school that I went to, um, we were, we, we were ranked in the nation and in track and, in, in just in, in football. Oh, football. Okay. In football. And so, um, we were like, I, I would always say my high school was like the varsity blues, mm. the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, being a, one of the star football players, never had to work for anything. Mm. Didn't really have to, you know, go to school. So that played a lot. You Your know. school's not going to like that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know. But they, <laughs> they, they, they know. So, so you know, that, that, that played a lot in my mind. Yeah. To where, you know, I didn't, didn't have my dad in my life, so I didn't have anybody to keep me grounded. Didn't have anybody to keep me structured. Yeah. You know? And so... um. I didn't have the work ethic. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, like, I definitely know. Like I had the talent. I always went off of my talent. I didn't put the hard work with it. So with track, if I would have really, really worked on putting the, the the time and effort into going to practice instead of just showing up to meets and running, yeah, I probably would have been in the Olympics. Mm. But I was just running off of my talent. I wanted yeah. to go party. Yeah, yeah. You know, I already had my scholarships and stuff for, and, you know, for football. Track was just like, all right, you know, I need something to do for the spring. So yeah. Let me run track. Is there, a, is there a little bit of regret in there? Like you say, uh, you, you think you could have gone to the Olympics. Is that like a, something you think about or not? No, nah, not really. No. Nah. Uh, I, mean, I, I had a question. I, I want to finish the athletic story because you're obviously a super, super talent, but as a coach, and I feel like I had this, I, I had I think issues as an athlete for a different reason in terms of why I don't think I reach my potential physically in wrestling and combat, but as a coach, because I messed up and didn't really invest in myself so much, I feel like those observing those things and helping people get over that is like one of the things that I feel like, yeah, ding, ding. yeah, yeah. There you go. So now you're working yeah. with somebody who's super talented. So Mal, she's, is she 16 or 17? 17. 17. Yeah. She's talented. I mean, she's a great CrossFitter. She's training with some of the best in the world and she's keeping up and doing more. And like, it's very, it's very obvious that she's been coached appropriately, that mm -hmm. she's got a lot of physical talent. So what do you do to try to do you think that she just has the work ethic or that you've helped cultivate that by the mistakes you made as an athlete? Um, more, I want to say it's 60, 40, 60. She has it. And then 40 comes from me not having it and wish I had it. Yeah. And so now that I have the opportunity to go ahead and steer somebody in the right direction with that talent, I'm all in. Nice. You know, when, when you, when you see me and, and you see how, how I am as a coach or how I am as a father, it's because of I didn't have my father around. So you want to do something better for you. Right. Yeah. Right. So so he, you know, not having him around and me messing out on the opportunities that I could have had. Yeah. If I would have had a more structured and 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 grounded life. Yeah. You know, mentally. Yeah. You know, because coming up, I was weak mentally. She's strong mentally. Mm. So I think I think that's in that's that's ingrained in her. 
Yeah. You know, that she she embodies that. You you can't teach. Yeah, it's just mentally. kind of it's in them. Yeah. So yeah. when you say you were weak mentally, like what did that mean? You would, like if it was hurting, you would give up easily yeah. or just all yeah. of it. Yeah. Hurting or you know, um not not really having a tenacity to want to want to work hard. Yeah. Like, you know, I was I was very cocky. Got it. I didn't find my confidence until later in life. Yeah. Until I have, you know, had my kids. Yeah. That's kind of what spawned it for you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I kind of brought you off track. So you, you were, you went to college, you played football over track. You didn't really like track, but you might've potentially had more talent in that. Just yeah. straight line, yeah. explosive speed. Absolutely. What, what was the collegiate, uh, process for? Cause I feel like if you go from non-structured and you're calling yourself mentally weak, I don't know, I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon, <laughs> but you go to college, especially at the D one level, there's mm-hmm. forced time for study hall. There's uh, mandatory weight training sessions, multiple, you know, video review. Like it, it's pretty structured at the division one level. What was yeah. that? Like, was it shocking for you? Did it help you? Did it, you fight it? Uh, it was shocking, yeah. you know, coming from, you know, inner city, it was shocking especially out in Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a like, big shot. When, my, when, yeah. when my mom was driving me out, and I can remember uh, coming through the state of Indiana and I had my head on the glass like, oh man, what did I just do? <laughs> why, why did you choose it? I, I, eh. You had reasons? I had reasons. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, you, you ever seen He Got Game? <laughs> With, with Ray Allen and Denzel? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Okay, so. got it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, like stuff like that. Like, yeah. You know, I didn't have anybody to really steer me in the right direction. But um, but when I got to Iowa and, and, you know, being a collegiate athlete is, you know, very structured. Yeah. That, like, I went in there with that cocky attitude. I felt like, oh, you know, I'm the fastest guy on the team. I came in as the fastest guy on the team. Yeah. You know, even though, you know, I'm playing with Bob Sanders and Robert Gallery and, you know, Chad Greenway and all them, like, I felt like, you know, hey, I'm the fast guy. You need to throw me the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Let you me know? go deep. <laughs> right. And it it didn't work out like that. Yeah. You know, it, it even though I, I would, I played as a, a true freshman, but I didn't see the, the, the ball as, as I wanted to, or, or as an athlete of my caliber should have. Yeah. Because of my attitude. Mm. You know, now when I look back on it, it's like, you know, most of the the um the talent that I had was wasting on my own because of my attitude. Yeah. And if and and, and I'm not gonna put all of this on not having my dad around, but yeah, that plays I mean, a big part. It, I mean it's a huge thing not yeah. to have a support yeah. structure that guides you and provides even just context for what it means to be a man or provider or Absolutely. whatever it is. It definitely Absolutely. plays a role for sure. Yeah. 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 So you Played as a true freshman. Mm-hmm. What you play all four years? Did you? I, um, I played as a true freshman and sophomore, and then I got suspended. Got it. I let a girl write my paper, <laughs> which you know, yeah, yeah. everybody hey, does. Yeah, yeah. You know? Could be bad or well, it could so just, why they single you out? Yeah, there? resourcefulness. You know, well, there was you know um, somebody who who was on my team who was in the same class as me, and um, the teacher thought that we copied off each other. But we mm. didn't because the girl wrote his paper. Uh, the same girl? No. Oh, <laughs> different girl, right? And so, and, and so the 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 deans and and, and everybody from um, from the English department got together and talked to him first and got singled it. me out. Okay. Yeah. So you so, got suspended your got junior suspended. year. My um. So so I had to take that that uh red shirt. Yep. And you know when when that happened, it's like. Oh man, football's at a pause. What did I do? Yeah. You know, never had a job. You know, um mentally I'm I'm not there because football. Yeah, that's know? like your your thing. That's my thing. Yeah. Right. You know, coming up from the inner city and everybody's dependent on me. You know, I had a um a two year old at this time, so I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I I need to to be doing football because if I don't make it, how can I give her the life that she deserves and that she needs? Yeah. Right. And so I decided to transfer to Rutgers. Got it. And then that's where I finished my career there and then moved on to the Chicago Bears, but then ultimately walked away from that. Got it. I had a question. You brought up uh, like football being everything for you and, and a route out, I'm guessing, mm-hmm. like of poverty or, you know, right. just to provide the life that you want for your kids. Do you think that there 
should be more emphasis on development of mental skills, academics, things outside of it, or in order to be the best in the world at mm. football, basketball, base, whatever the sport is that you're investing in, they have to be single-minded. Yeah. I always wonder that. I, I, I firmly believe if you're going to college to play a sport, you're there to play the sport. That should be the thing. That should be the thing. Yeah. And then what about skills outside of that? Like, cause there's some stuff in school. I mean, you could make an argument like philosophy and learning. It could potentially help with like decision-making and mm -hmm. just being a better person or something like that. But some of the stuff that you learn is probably not practical, but there mm -hmm. could be stuff like money management or something like that, yeah. that could be helpful right. for anybody, regardless right. of what happens afterwards. You think that young athletes would uptake that if they had, people that were telling if, them if to they, do it. Yeah. Yeah. If they, if they had it, if, if they made the mandatory, all right, you got to do three years, you know, if they made yeah. that e even in the NBA, yeah. if you have to do three years and you're just playing this sport, Hey, this is what you need to know. Yeah. Because, and it's not the other stuff. And it's, yeah. And it's yeah. not the other stuff. Th yeah. This is what you need to know. You, you need one. All right. You, you need to know how to time management because being an 18 year old, who knows how to time manage at yeah. 18? Yeah. You know, you got to do 10 hours of study hall. You got to come back and catch this bus to be able to make it to um, meetings at 120. Yeah. Right? And then you got to watch film and then you got to go get tape and you got to get, you know, your yeah. stuff on. You're a yeah. professional athlete. It's I mean, crazy. Yeah. And then you got to, <laughs> you know, and then... Then you got to, you know, probably leave practice early. Yeah. You got to catch a bus. You got to go to class. Yeah. You got to find a way to, to eat. Yeah. You got to come back and do, you know, study hall again. Yeah. And then by the time you get back to your dorm, it's 10, 11 o'clock. You're you exhausted. Wanna, you're exhausted. Or you want to see what's going on. You want to hang out with girls or something. <laughs> and then you got to repeat that. Yeah. That's asking too much of, of a kid, especially yeah. when they're not steering you in the right direction. Yeah. So- you're asking a kid to do at least 18 hours of football and then six hours of, of, of schooling. Yeah. And you have to do that all year round for four to five years. Yeah. It's almost like setting him up for failure. Yeah. yeah. By, by the time I was a junior, I was like, I want to be a regular student. Yeah. This, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you played a year with the bears and then what did it look like afterwards? Did you get into, is that you get into coaching right away? Um, I, I got into, to training right away. Yeah. Personal yeah. training. Personal training. Right and where were you at, living uh, at that time? Did you stay in South Iowa? No. Oh, oh yeah. You South had already Jersey. transferred to Rutgers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I came home. Um, man, those, th that year and a half was dark. Mm. I mean, like, you know, when I look back on it. How many years I, ago was this, by the way? Um, 2008, 2009. Okay. So yeah. about 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. A little over that. Yeah. So. Like, I always felt like I was a robot for other people. So I was playing football for others, mm. even though, you know. Like had, coaches or you mean like brothers? Family. A family. Okay. Yeah, Got family. it. Family. Yeah. So, so I had my, my oldest daughter who was 18 now when I was 17 as a junior. And I had racial tensions and everything dealing with that. Mm. Because I had got a white girl pregnant at a Catholic high school, mm. I didn't know that was a bad thing to do <laughs> at a Catholic high school. <laughs> you know, they like my junior year, they stopped serving me lunch. People were calling in saying, you know, he need to be killed. He need he need to be Holy out of here, shit. expelled. Like yeah. all this stuff. Like they were yeah. having meetings about me and everything, but then they weren't going to kick me out because yeah. I was bringing you were money the, into the school. Yeah, you were the guy. Yeah, yeah. So, but but it took a, a white lunch lady. The head lunch lady to give me free lunch throughout the whole year. Really? Until I graduated. Huh. Yep. She she cursed all <laughs> all her um, employees out. Wow. And said, This kid, you know, he made a mistake. So what? Yeah. You know, and, and that's why I always told people that like her coming to my defense, that's why I would never hate white people. Yeah. Regardless of all the racial stuff that that I went through with my daughter. And then and then people, you know even from my own family, like hating on me for wanting to step up to the plate to be a father. Yeah. I didn't have my father in my life. Yeah. So I knew by, by becoming a father, being active, you know, showing love, giving my time, which is showing love yeah. that that's what I didn't have. So I, I need to give that to her yeah. regardless if, if I'm this, you know, top 10 wide receiver in the nation. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, about you're that. a human it's, first. Right. Yeah. Right. I want to be a father, but, but people stirred me in a way, a 17-year-old kid in a way to say, hey, 
you go ahead and focus on this, it's going to benefit for her on this. But mm. I didn't care about that. Yeah. So I'm I'm throughout my whole years in college, I'm I'm tugging back and forth. Trying to be a dad and building a professional career right. as well. Right. When when deep down in my heart, I wanted to be a dad first. Hmm. Have knew- you have you always been like that? Or you think it was the absence of your father that made you like that's super important? You know, I and when I was young, I said to my mom, I was like, at 18, I, and I didn't plan this. Yeah. So I was like, at 18, I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> <laughs> you had a premonition? I, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I, I, for some reason, I, I just always felt that, like, I, I wanted to be a father. Huh. You know, and yeah. not saying that I planned it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No. You know, but but yeah. it just, you know, it just happened. And, and you know, I just, I knew what I felt, not having them around, the broken promises and all that. And yeah. so- when even my family members who who saw the hurt in me, even when they were telling me that like, hey, you, what you're doing is wrong. You need to go make this money and everything to take care of her. Like, they knew the hurt. Yeah. But to only tell me that for their own benefit, you know, I, I found that out later on in life that it was that I was a robot. Yeah. You know, I was I was being a robot for other people and not myself. So when you got when you got back from the Chicago bears and you started getting into training and you went through that dark period, is that where you kind of had the epiphany of like the yeah. culture you had surrounded yourself yeah. with and kind of, you just didn't like yeah. seeing other people like that. Yeah. It was, it, you know, people, the looks that I got, yeah. you know, um, I felt like I wasn't welcome at home. Wow. Yeah. Um, felt like I was a disappointment. Mm. A lot of people were saying, what are you doing here? You should, you know, be in the league. Like, what are you doing? But nobody, Nobody wanted to take a time out and pause and, and understand my mental and where I was at. Yeah. You know, two months before the combine, two months before pro day, I tried to commit suicide Damn. because of the pressure, you know, because of the pressure to perform for other people. So even when I I made it for that short stint and decided to walk away because there was too much pressure. If I, I walked away because I know at this level, if I wanted to be successful, this needs to be my number one. Yeah. Can't it's got to be the only, side check. Yeah. the only thing. Yeah. Right? You know, for for that moment, if I want to be successful, I need to be selfish. Yeah. But they they know I have a big heart, so I wanted I, I cared about them instead of myself. Yeah. So when I came home, it was like nobody wanted to sit down and be like, "Man, like were you really feeling this bad? Did what was it something that I did? Was it something that we contributed to?" Yeah. And it was, it was just, yeah, it was dark. Man. Did you process all that yourself? Yeah. 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 No, like therapy guidance, counselors, anything just processing. Yeah. yeah. And what's your process for like, like for dealing with that? Like when people go through mental health stuff, were you, you know, just living life and journaling, thinking about it? No, it was, it was, you know, I remember 10 days when I was in the nut house, for 10 days, I could remember the people who that, that belong in the nut house <laughs> that had problems. It was like they snapped out of it and would look at me and be like, you don't belong here. Like, what are you doing here? Huh? You know, and and now when I look back on it, I was like, man, those must have been angels. You know, God must have been looking over me because he was able to snap them out of whatever they were going through to look at me and say, what are you doing here? Yeah. Like, you don't belong here. Yeah. You know, and then it 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 took me to 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 actually surrender, surrender know, how I saw myself, how I view myself as an athlete, um, how I view myself as a person, and and how I view myself as a father, to surrender myself to God, to 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 allow him to to be the driving force in my life. And that's where, you know, everything became clear to me that like, you know, in order to be a better father, a better man, a a future husband, and a future father of my kids. I need to get right with him first. Got it. And so that's why I took the initiative. Yeah. So that's the, you're like somewhere around 25 years old, yep. South Jersey. You South started Jersey. personal training personal there. Personal training at, at um, what were they called? Um, what, what's the big gyms called? Goals, LA Fitness. LA Fitness. Okay. <laughs> LA Fitness. LA Fitness. Got, Got my NASM CPT and I nice. thought that was like. You were the guy. <laughs> yeah. And then it was boring. Yeah. That was boring. And then. You was know, the demographic mostly like people that just came in to like lose a little bit of weight? Yeah. Yeah. And and that wasn't me. You know, I, I, I need energy. I need 
I need I need yeah. a CrossFit, <laughs> you know. But but CrossFit was was nowhere to be found. Like, yeah. it, it it wasn't in in my neighborhood. It wasn't in 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 my circle. Like, yeah, I didn't. I knew nothing about it. So no. when did you find it? The two two. So you that's like this late is, early two thousand ten ish. Yeah, this is two thousand and ten, and then um, that's when I met my wife. She is a, a CFA and um, CFP. Yeah, I mean uh, CPA. And uh, she was moving out to California. Got it. And then I was in Jersey, and then I moved out to California with her. Cool. And then I can remember um, watching the news in, in in L.A. We lived in downtown L.A., and they were they had the CrossFit Games. Oh, because the StubHub Center, that was the right. first year that yeah. it was there Yeah, in Carson. Yeah. Yep, they had that on TV, and I was like, oh, this is cool. And then f- somehow I didn't see it anymore, and then I got into uh, training. Um, could I have a um, background in boxing? Then I got into training UFC fighters. And then I would go down to Black House Gym in, in Torrance, California, and, you know, work with Leo the Machida and all of them. Yeah, and, that's right around the corner from where the games was, right? Yeah, 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 yeah right in Torrance. Yeah. Yeah, so then, then I got doing that, and then, you know, the UFC gym is about train different, yeah. right? So I got into doing, like, circuit training, and then somebody was like, hey, you, you should check this out. And this is 2013, and it was 13.5, the picture that you have up – in the bathroom. Oh yeah, yeah. Right the, it was it thrusters and pull ups and and chest bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, damn, this is dope. And then I started doing, I started digging and digging and learning about CrossFit and and then the whole um, you can own your own gym thing came up and I was like, you know, I don't want to work no more. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't want to work. Yeah. I want to be my own boss. And yeah. then that's when I got with uh, Dogtown with Dusty. Cool. And um, and then I started picking his brain and stuff and seeing how he was training uh, Lindsay at the time. Because at that time, he had Lindsay, Sam, and Val on on, on the podium. Yeah. And so I guess you, you could kind of say they were like the- you know, One of the, the premier teams. Yeah, yeah, premier teams. Yeah. So that's when, you know, the 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 CrossFit bug hit me. Were you doing CrossFit? I like was actually CrossFit. yourself. Yeah. I'm yeah. super curious. So yeah. you're like one of the most explosive humans mm-hmm. on the planet. Yeah. This is pretty much an endurance sport. Yeah. What was the first transition like for Whew. you? <laughs> uh, um, if 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 people out there know about benching, what benching does to, <laughs> to your shoulders, oh man, trying to do handstand walks or handstand pushups, it, it was you know I spent the whole year having to work on mobility. Yeah, you know, and then you know I wasn't moving my feet. <laughs> I was doing everything from the power position. Yeah. yeah. You know, then I, you know, I had to like relearn yeah. you know, everything, but I did that on my own because, you know, getting into CrossFit, I feel as if that, that like if I would have had a coach that took the time out to actually understand who I am as an athlete yeah, and, and know how to handle the athlete and actually like work with me to, to say, Hey, you know, we don't need to touch the barbell. Yeah. You got to train differently if you want right. to participate in this sport. Exactly. I mean, you're tall, long limbed, super powerful. You have some skills probably like yeah. naturally really good. Right. Other stuff that needs like individual attention. Right. I'm guessing. Yeah. No, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. But you know, at the time he never, he didn't take that, that time. And so, you know, and, and, and I'm a person that's like, you know, when I was um, training at, at, um, in college, I will always go to the coaches and ask them, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Because, you know, at that time too, I thought, all right, if I'm playing football and I'm done, you know, I go into, you know, being a coach. But yeah. until I find out how they treated GAs, I was like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> that like, is yeah. not a good lifestyle. No, no, yeah. no. We talked about that a little bit before the podcast about the state of uh, college strength conditioning. And that's yeah. something we didn't even talk about. But yeah. that's how uh, they treat GAs. Yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. not a good nah. life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just how coaches. Yeah. yeah. No, Got no. It. That could be a conversation. Yeah. Another, another time. Another yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was, it's, you know, those eight minute workouts were good for me, but anything over that was like the lack of acid would, I would get, I would cramp up all the time. Yeah. You know, I could cycle, I could do all the skill stuff, but to, to do it for, you know, to do a 20 minute air ramp. And I need to get 900 to 1,000 reps. I'm only getting six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most of the time, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll am i be sitting there like, damn. Yeah. Or saying the F word out loud. <laughs> or like, you know, just, just hurting. It just yeah. When you started CrossFit. doing CrossFit, did you already want to do it like competitively? Or were you just doing it for your fitness at the time? It's, that's the thing is that like nobody said, hey, 
this, you know, CrossFit is a different beast. You know, you we gotta, you know, re we gotta rebuild you from the beginning. Yeah. You can't just yes, you're a you're a um a gifted athlete, but yeah, you the, know, this is a different beast. The talent doesn't transfer into every discipline, Thank right? You. Like you're, Thank you know, you, you have yep. perfect genes and proportions for sprinting and change of direction, yeah. hand-eye coordination. But it's like, all right, well now to be good at everything, right. some of this stuff is great. Some of this stuff is like, well, you got to work on that. Right. You know, like even just muscle tension is great yes. for lifting a lot of weight, yeah. but for lifting a 45 pound bar a thousand times, it's not the best thing. So exactly. did you have the bug to compete right away? Like in an actual competition or were you just kind of like- I did. Uh, uh, there, there was a thing out in California called um, um, Legendary Competitor. So so I did three of those and, and won the, the third one. Those were like local, like local, local comps. comps. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Local comps. Yeah. But still I didn't have the efficient movement. Nobody yeah. still, you know, that started to side. Right. Yeah, yeah. Cause when I joined the gym, it was like training with Noah. It was training with Lindsay, yeah. uh, Kenny Leverage, Chelsea Grisby, yeah. Sam. So it was like, I was thrown right into it instead of saying, Hey, you know, we, you need to step back. Yeah. <laughs> so you, but you were in that thinking I'm going to compete in this. Right. Okay. Right. And then Noah mentioned something about grid. When, when was yeah, that? Then, then, then grid came about and then, you know, of course you we, built well we did for grid. Them. Yeah. And um, you were on a team. Yeah. He was oh, okay. on Noah's yeah. team. Yeah. He came oh, out. You were on the said, rain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. LA rain. Yeah. It, it, I mean, were, you at, were you at the Vegas combine? No, not that one. Oh, you messed up. Oh. You <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> I, I did the, 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 the Rancho Cucamonga one. To where clearly, you know, I, I was the strongest guy out there, but I wasn't efficient in my movement. Mm. So that first year, they had me work under Dusty the whole year. And then the second year, I had to do, you know, at the L.A. Convention Center, the, the yeah. combine all over again. And then, you know, they signed me. And then, you know, that season just was, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like there's some legend has yeah. it. There's some place in Florida that's still trying to keep grid going. So, so, South yeah. American Grid League or something like that. Oh, yeah, God yeah. bless. FL yeah. Grid League. Yeah. Oh, FL and, Grid League. Yeah. And oh, okay. I think it's crazier than than what that we it did. was. Yeah. Yeah. That that sport that they created was. I mean, CrossFit is a pretty hard sport mm -hmm. on your joints and on your nervous system and on your metabolism. That sport, I feel like, was even worse. It was worse. like take the most, <laughs> the most explosive, heavy movements and do them as fast as you possibly yeah. can. Yeah. And like two hundred and ten pound <laughs> med balls, and you had to lift. Oh my god! And you had to, yeah, yeah. jump over something into a pistol, and yeah, it was yeah, yeah. So, d did you transition like out of being and actually hearing your story? You're still. A high, you're 37, mm -hmm. right? I'll be 37. You'll be 37. Yeah. And you're still, you were this far away from being a world weightlifting team member. On a world team, yeah. So you're still really an athlete. Do yeah. you still identify as, like, where do you, you got the balance of coach and athlete. What is one more important than the other? Coach. Or, okay, coach. coach is more important. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you just need the athletics. You just love it. It um, gives you something. Right now, I'm in the I'm in, I'm in the dad phase. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't look like you have a dad <laughs> bod. Get out of here with that. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm pushing 37, <laughs> so it's like, all right, I need to you know try to do some cardio to keep the heart up. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting older. Yeah, but you know, weightlifting is it's it's not hard for me. It's so just kind of like fun it's just there. And, yeah, yeah, you know, and then but um but coaching is is that's that's your main thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Speaking of, uh, your weightlifting is easy for you. Your joints are all good. good. No major ACL no. shoulder, no surgeries or anything from uh, your football time. I had a, a plantar fascia tear. Yeah, and surgery tore it off. Yeah, ooh, surgery. That's a tough one. And that was in '06, and supposedly back then that was a career-ending injury. Really? No, it, I mean came right back. Yeah, and you, you told me that you had a 38-inch vert. Oh, 48. Four, uh, sorry. 40, Jeez, 40 Max. Inch. Yeah, no, that's yeah, a huge difference. 48-inch yeah. vert is like, yeah. it's like it's jumping like, I feel, over a human. It's like I, I like to like still do that stuff. And, and like, you know, um, I did like a 11-4 broad jumping in, in my Romaleo 2s. That is crazy. So it, it's it's like that's I like to remind myself that yeah. like you know hey I'm I'm still active. Yeah, you know? I loved football growing up, and I had a I had a different relationship with my father, and it may be combative, but I had so much more talent in wrestling than mm -hmm. I had in football. But mm -hmm. I loved football, and my father's Egyptian, so he didn't like American sports. Didn't really make sense to him. Right, and. I feel like if I had met you when I was 18 or 17, I would have hated you because you have like all of the 
tools to be mm -hmm. world class. And I wanted that so badly. I'm glad now I met you as an adult so I could just appreciate <laughs> how, how talented you are at those skills. But, um, that to jump 48 inches off the ground is something that is like, I mean, how many people in the world could ever do that? It's a super, super small amount of people mm -hmm. trying to transfer that skill into CrossFit. I feel like that's a, a monumental yeah. task. Yeah. 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 So you shifted into kind of athletics post grid to be weightlifting. And then mm -hmm. in what, at what stage in that period from 2010 to 2020, did you start working with CrossFit athletes? Um, it was like when, when I got to be around Noah, um, Lindsay and, and, um, and Kenny Leverage and, and like going down, going out to regionals and going to the games and just seeing the preparation. Like, like I watch, like, I learn a lot when I'm when I'm watching. Yeah. You know, and 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 I'm constantly, you know, on social media, you know, picking cues or 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 seeing like like I always said, you know, the certifications and stuff that I have aren't my teachers. Mm. The experience, you know, learning from others, um picking their brains because their experience is their teacher. Yeah. So that that's the only way I can get better. You know, and and when I um when I started, you know, going out to the games and seeing, you know, these athletes train and then how, how much they, they, they put into the, into their bodies and, and, and they, the hours that they put into being, you know, their greatness, like it, it inspired me because it's no different than, you know, what if you're a UFC fighter, you know, LeBron James winning a championship and then going right back into the gym the next day to, yeah. you know, to shoot more balls. Yeah. You know, um, like that quote from Bruce Lee, you know, I'm uh, the guy that's practicing, you know, this kick a thousand yeah, times, like, you yeah. know, stuff like that. And, and that's what CrossFit is to me is, is, is the amount of hours and, and time and motivation and determination these athletes put in. Yeah. But it's the behind the scenes, you know, the, yeah, the, so when the, the lights are not or on the, or yeah. the lady that's, that's putting it together. Yeah. Right. And, and that's just. So it wasn't until I got with a young teen. Um, well, 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 mainly it was the athletes of my gym. I don't like calling them members. They're athletes. If you're in here doing CrossFit and you're doing Olympic weightlifting, you're an athlete. Because that's, that, that, that's an athlete, uh, uh, an athletic, athletic move. movement. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you're an athlete. And, and I have this thing in my gym where I'm like, are we going to be a member today or are you going to be an athlete? <laughs> you know, which, which one are you? And sometimes they'd be like, yo, I want to be a member today. Like, <laughs> and you just leave them alone. You're like, yeah, all right, fine. You know, yeah, so, so just, just, um, just knowing that I can, I'm at a place in my life to where I could take the back seat and it's not about me anymore. And, and I could humble myself and put others first. Yeah. That's where really, you know, working with them and getting them better. That's where it's like, all right, I want to uh, I want to try my hand at working with uh, athletes or or an, or an athlete one on one. And then I got with a teen um in in uh 2017 and started working with her in November. Got her to the CrossFit Games in 2018. And cool. then that's when um I sold my half of the gym that I was on in Automo CrossFit in in Ventura County, California. So when I sold it and then moved out to Iowa in um July of 2018 and we came out to the game. She 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 placed ninth. That's where I met Mal, and then, you know, here we are now. And yeah, yeah. So, what do you think the so working with Mal? When did that start? That started. In oh, November. Give, give a little context for Mal. So this year she yeah she finished what? third in the open in, and all that in the world in the open. No, uh, fifth. Fifth in the world in the Open. Fifth. And then where in quarterfinals in North third. America? Third. third. Third in quarterfinals. So and that's she's, not the team division. That's no, everybody. that's the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, and then I guess they do a leaderboard for for the whole world. And they so, aggregated them? Yeah. yeah. So she's fifth. Fifth overall in that. Yeah. Um, and she's 17 years old. Yeah. Um, when did you start working with her? And I feel like she... Maybe it's just due to COVID as exponentially mm -hmm. better this year mm -hmm. than before. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. November 2019. That's when I started working with her. Um, she she was training with uh, another CrossFit athlete, CrossFit Games athlete, um, who who took her to the games in 2018. She placed fourth, 
and then in 2015, she she trained her her own self because I guess they had a little falling out or whatever. Yeah. And then, um, to my knowledge, and her telling me, I think she she was overtraining, you know, too much because she she has such a drive that she feel as if she needs to do this because others are doing it. She needs to do more than them. Yeah, to be better, to win. What do you think about that? It's a mindset. I think it's a mindset. Um, but, it, but there's limits to it. Yeah. You know, we, you know, our, our bodies have limits, right? But, but if you're, if you're doing the right things to take care of your body, eat right, um, um, move the barbell well, move well in, in your skill, gymnastics, and then repeat that, then your longevity can be years and years and years. Yeah. You know, LeBron James is one of them. Yeah. I mean, he he has millions of dollars, so, but <laughs> it helps, for right? Sure. Right? Yeah. But he take care of his body. Yeah. You know, he eats right. You know, and and clearly, you know, most of that is his genetics. Yeah. You know, and but she's one of them. She's a seventeen year old that has God gifted abilities. She takes care of her body. Her parents have the money to to you know hire somebody to you know um, cook the food for her that she needs to eat. She, yeah. She counts her macros. She's not your normal 17 year old. Yeah. And, and, and that's, what's fun about training out. Yeah. So as a coach, the competitive edge, you, and I feel like for me, this has kind of evolved in my own career starting out. I used to think, okay, it's technical knowledge of writing a program. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, okay, well now it's organization, environment creation. Like what is, what would you say like your competitive edge as a coach that you're bringing to the table? It's like you have some know-how cause you've been in the game yep. for a while. You obviously have technical knowledge of moving a barbell mm -hmm. cause you're almost world-class or you are world-class at mm -hmm. that already. You participated in grid, you have speed, you mm -hmm. have behaviors. Like what is it that you feel like you're bringing to the table that helped her start to close that gap? The mental. Mental. The mental area. Yeah. The, the, the area that I lacked in, you know, growing up. Yeah, what we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah, the mental area. So I like the I like to create barriers for her. Like like when we're in the gym, you know, I, I have a ten thousand square foot gym, right? So when we're in there, you know, I'll and she's doing her 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 wide that I program for her, I'll be like in the back, back, back from her. Cause I always tell my like, look, I could be close to you all day in the gym. But when y'all on that competition floor, it's loud and I'm nowhere near to be. Yeah, able, you can't see it. You yeah. can't see me. Yeah. You need to be in your lane. Nice. Tunnel vision. Yeah. Right? It's it's you in your lane. Yeah. You're not worrying about the person on your right. You're not worrying about the person on your left. I'm going to be back here. We're going to create a scenario to where I'm going to be back here and I'm yelling, hey, take a breath. I'm, you know, <laughs> four seconds, three, <laughs> two, one, get back on the barbell. Yeah. You know, because I need you to feel that because that's how it's going to be. When it matters, yeah, you know, so yeah, yeah. it's the it, it's the mental aspects. It's it's you know we we uh, you know we we pray. Um, um, she does she doesn't mind that you know I share my faith with her. Um, but then again, it's it's she takes it head on. Yeah, you know when we first got together, I always like to ask athletes, all right, what are what are your weaknesses? I don't even care about your strengths because your strengths going to be there yeah. because if if I care about your strength that's all you you're going to want to do you're going to get spoiled with that mm. let's get spoiled with your weaknesses burpees <laughs> alright that's everybody <laughs> 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 running wall balls um being efficient in, in, in my double unders uh um ring muscle ups being efficient in my ring muscle ups my my handstand walking okay emoms emoms and ramps emoms all the time and then she mashed it and, and, and she doesn't complain about it. She takes it head on. Yeah. She seems like she likes to work. Yes. That's an interesting thing that, yeah. uh, some people, they like the, they like game day. They like winning. They like fame, mm -hmm. but the work that takes to get there, they might not necessarily enjoy. And you could become a champion yeah. like that too. Right. I mean, it's not like you have to, but when she you likes, have someone that likes the work, it's, yeah. I feel like maybe a little bit easier to coach. Yeah. yeah she likes to grind. Max. Yeah. She likes to grind. She's like, we call her the. T one thousand. She just keeps <laughs> I mean, Mal, Mal she, one thousand. She yeah. really kind of is watching yeah. her on site. I feel like she's giving the athletes a complex, yeah. and they're like, "She's doing more." I'm like, "Look, I 
I don't care what she's doing. Yeah, that right. doesn't mean that you yeah. need to be doing right. that, but right. it's still yeah. just she's like impressive. A, a, a Mustang. Like, yeah. I, I can't, you know, and <laughs> you're she, constantly holding yeah. her back. Holding yeah. the reins and, back. and most of the time she fight with me on like, James, this is not enough. Yeah. I'm like, Ma, like, Ma, just, just, just trust the process. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Progress over pride. Just yeah, trust it. For sure. Okay. With, she'll do the program and then she'll be like, Hey, <laughs> Look at this workout. You mind if I do it? How you feeling? I, f- I feel good. Okay, you could do it. And and that's the, the that's the dialogue that her and I had. Cool. That, you know, it's open because I always I always say to her, feel good, move good, move good, lift good, lift good, perform good. Mm. You know, if every day, hey, how you feeling? Oh, I'm tired. All right, let's call it a day. Um, no, I want mile. I can see it in your face. You you are tired. Don't don't try to you know, force yourself through a training because that's where you can really get hurt. If yeah. You're forcing your body to, to, to exhort, you know, this, this effort that you, that you don't have the strength that you don't have the, 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 the air in your lungs that you don't have because your body is tired. Your mind is tired. You're going to get hurt. Yeah. And even not just get hurt, but you actually, this is something I fight in CrossFit a lot because I mean, I coach some of the cream of the crop, but Mm -hmm. we also have a whole network of just people that just want to be good. And it seems like a lot of these less gifted athletes, they think that pushing themselves through that is the way I'm like, yeah, it's a way to train slowly Mm -hmm. and to Mm -hmm. ruin your body. Really. I mean, there's really no benefit in that other than maybe a couple times throughout the year, like prepping for a comp or, you know, something like that where you might have to push yourself, but still, I feel like it's a it's a breath of fresh air to hear you say that you do that with your athletes. Yeah, yeah. I, I always make audibles like, "Hey, oh, you know, my abs are are done from test two. All right, you know, because even though she uh, we we did the quarterfinals, she still wanted to do her her training. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm like, all right, you know, I'm I'm not afraid to to make audibles on the training. And, yeah, and and she she appreciate that. Cool. What's the process been like as an athlete? who's been pretty world-class in a couple different things. I feel like transitioning to coaching where you have no control on game day and you just got to sit there and watch mm-hmm. is could be tough sometimes. How did you, yeah. Nervous. It's more nervous. Yeah. Do you get more nervous uh, as a man. coach? Nervous. Yeah. yeah. Nervous. Just I like, mean, f- yeah. I mean, now, you know, my, my, uh, seven year old daughter who is, um, uh, she won, she, she's a state champion in gymnastics and she's making her own name in gymnastics. And so, Whenever I'm watching her compete, I'm man. I'm just I gotta stand <laughs> like it, You're the crazy dad. Oh uh, man, it's like it's, it's different than game day. Yeah. It's like you know when you go out there, you get that first hit, and he's like, "All right, yeah, get your, this it's is like you're yeah, you're it's there." Like, yeah, I watch her on the beam. I'm holding my breath. I'm I'm moving, <laughs> trying to balance <laughs> yeah. for her. That's awesome. So it's, it, and then it's the same way with Miles. It's like you know I always tell her, "I believe in you," and I tell my kids this too. I believe in you, but ultimately it's up to you to believe in you. Yeah. I believe you can do anything that you want, but you got to believe that you can push yourself harder than the next person. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. I mean, I feel like we got so much good stuff and yeah, I do have a few questions from Instagram. Uh, yeah. I've found a couple here. There's a whole bunch. So if I start reading one and it sucks, we could skip it. But yeah, let's see. Uh, quads like Sully. Who's your favorite rapper? Ah, oh, man. All right. Biggie. Can I follow that question up yeah. with, do you like modern rap versus old school rap? Oh, man. I can't understand it. Me either. And I, I mean, I like the baby. I don't know who that is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <It's Bob. laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, maybe if I heard. What about it, I little would, baby? No. You don't like you don't like yeah. the ATL. I can't oh, okay. hear. It. I so like a, a Biggie, Tupac. To me, it was poetic. I could yeah. hear the story. I could yeah. actually listen to it. Yeah. I listen to the stuff now. I'm I like, this conversation is hilarious. Sorry, our sorry. parents were like, I can't understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. No. Yeah. So now we're the old people. <laughs> I, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. So I mean, you know, Biggie, he's dead, but um, I would have to say Drake. Drake, okay. Did you watch the Biggie documentary on, uh, what yep. was it, Netflix? Netflix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. two of them. There's two There's two. Yeah, because I, I started watching it and I was like, where's this country music thing that Chris is talking oh, yeah. about? And then I saw another. That one. was the thing that tripped me out the most when he, him and his mom, he's like, I can't even go to sleep unless I put on some country western. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like, I never I knew like, that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's that. move on with the questions. Daniel Kearns wants to know, how do you help a teen balance CrossFit, social life, school, sports, and comparisons? Um, 
with Mal, um, she's homeschooled, so so she got the leg up on that. Um, this Has she her, always been homeschooled? Do you know? Uh, since uh, her freshman year. Oh, um, so before COVID. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right before COVID. Yeah. Wow. She she just didn't like it, and then she was getting judged on her her body. Got it. You know, so um, so you know, Mal is not. You know, she's she she's kind of like me. You know, I wasn't. I, I don't know. You got to be into school. Yeah. Man. And, you know, our parents, when we were coming up, they forced us in school. Now it's like these kids, and like I was telling you the other day, they, they'll let my daughter write confusion with a PH instead of an F. <laughs> and then don't, don't <laughs> correct, don't correct it. it. What? Yeah. 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 That's how they, that's yeah. how they teaching kids now. It's not about memory. How, how, how we learn. It's not yeah. about memory. No more. It's, it's just, you got to let them sound it out. Yeah, that's what you do. You sound it out, but then you write it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But um, but no, I mean, just just like you know, the brave one, Jim. You know, the, the that's your the mission statement. Yes, that's your brand. The, oh, the, the, and this is you and Mal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, mission statement, uh, the, the name behind the brave one, Jim, is not only do I want you to be brave in the gym, but also outside the gym, because when you're doing these these vigorous workouts like CrossFit. Um, you got to take your mind and your body, mainly your mind, somewhere that you never took it before. And and if you can, and if you are brave enough to do that, then you are brave enough to 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 take on anything outside of the gym because that's where it matters. You know, the 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 gym is just the gym is just something to to, to help you be strong mentally and emotionally, so you can carry that out into the real world. Yeah. You can't always hide in this one segment. You got to be able to be strong for the real world, for the for your everyday stuff. Yeah. So, and it know. trains your mind to be able to deal with stress and pressure and go. anxiety and all that stuff. Yeah. Cause there like you, you feel the panic sensations you feel when you're like, Oh my God, I'm hyperventilating on a rower. Yeah. Sometimes you just like have a hard conversation and somebody challenges you and it like takes your breath away. Yeah. Like you can almost accustom yourself to yeah. the difficulties of life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's see, J Dubs twenty three. In the next five years, what will we see as benchmark numbers for the top athletes like Mal? Um, Mal, see, man, next five years. So Mal is twenty two. So Mal, right now, if she wanted to, by time twenty twenty four, she can be an Olympian in weightlifting. In, in weightlifting in the sixty four category. That wouldn't because she me. has she has the numbers for it. Yeah, so, Max, you have any thought on? Or sorry, continue. So I would say, I mean, she's two forty five clean jerk now, and then one ninety five snatch, oh three thirty one back squat, three sixty five deadlift. That's scary. So I would say at <laughs> least I, I would yeah. say like three oh eight clean and jerk. Yeah. Are you on a a strength cycle year round? With her, with her? Yeah. yeah. And is Synergies. it the first session of the week? First session of the day? Yeah. Or yeah. No, no, no. She, she my, th this is how crazy her mind is. She likes to do at least 40 to an hour of conditioning before she does anything else. Anything else. That's wow. that's how her body works. Hmm. Yeah. So we got here. She got me up. <laughs> we got here at seven this morning. I heard. I've I've for heard her to and she's turning into a legend already because the first day of training. So we have three sessions. We did 5k run development work, strength work, which is a mix of like mm -hmm. uh, deadlifts and bench presses and some kettlebell deads and walking forward. And then an EMOM, which is basically just volume building CrossFit. And that started from eight to nine 30. Then I think at like 11 to 1230 ish and then two to three 30 plus all the setup and everything else. That yeah, goes yeah, with yeah. That. yeah. But Mal trained in between those blocks. Yeah. So she basically trained from 8 a.m. until the end of the day. And I was like, yeah. wow, yeah. all right, yeah. this girl's She's, got some capacity. Was that her yeah. plan? Like, I'm going to come up here and fuck with these people's heads. <laughs> no, no, she, she, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got caught in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she gets like, she gets, um, she gets anxiety when she's not doing enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how does that happen on game day? What's well, like the process is just, it's easier to just chill out or does she like ride the bike in between events? Ride the bike. Really? Ride the bike. She needs to be like, Gotta be moving. like for her, for her snatch. Um, we're working now to get her snatch more consistent because when it's just, all right, I just need you to work up to a heavy single right now. Consistently is at 185, right? But if it's, with a run, 
something to get yeah yeah get her going with a snatch, she'll probably hit like a two hundred twelve five. She can't do that when it's just mm. a barbell. Yeah, she it's like the yeah. Uh, she needs yeah the she, adrenaline and the need, heat yeah. and the intensity. Right. And th- I've seen successful CrossFitters like that, whereas successful power athletes are almost opposite. They mm-hmm. sit a lot. They try to get as calm as possible for that one like oh, surge of That's intensity. Me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I I noticed too like you're just a very mellow person Mm -hmm. and like in the environment you chill relax whatever but when you move like you did that little bike sprint and you decide that you're going to move fast yeah the contrast of your (laughs) relaxation to your speed i was like holy shit that dude's got a lot of power stored in that body Mm -hmm. (laughs) on these cheetah legs (laughs) (laughs) i'm not sure what kind of legs i got not cheetahs all right the last three we'll do will be family related so mike mcgoldrick one of our coaches wants to know how many pounds does having a kid add to your back squat Uh, man (laughs) i don't think it does negative (laughs) negative there you go mike (laughs) he's just hopeful because he he's uh, he's one deep he's trying to decide if he wants to have more yeah um, how did you introduce your daughters, uh, to fitness at a young age? So, um, out in LA, um, daycare is 2,500 a month. Wow. <laughs> a yeah. month? A month. That's like a, you have to have a full-time job just to pay for daycare. Yeah. And that's where all your yeah. money goes. Yeah. So when we were living in downtown LA, uh, my wife, uh, she, she currently works for uh, the private bank of Wells Fargo. So she was, um, six blocks away. And so when I would go to Dogtown, I would bring P with me. And, you know, and, and Noah could test this because he always, like, you know, would play with her and hold her and everything. And so she was in there with me 24-7. And so um, never showed her anything. So she she crawled at three months, walked at seven. At 10 months, she went to a two and a half pound dumbbell and started doing dumbbell snatches. Never showed her. <laughs> Just on her own. <laughs> on her own. And that started the legend of Princess P. <laughs> Pr- Sage Bookman. So she, she, yeah. And and then from there, you know, they say- Were they clean reps though? Clean reps. <laughs> clean reps. Yeah. He, he's biased. Yeah. He wouldn't no, know rapper. Yeah. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I mean, I, I, did a, I did a chronological video on her and like, you know, they say kids shouldn't jump off, can't jump off their feet until they're two. Both feet. At ten months, she jumped on a forty-five pound plate. Jeez. And then with a ten pound on top, and then her legend just grew from there. And and now she's you know at seven years old, she she power cleans now. I don't know why I'm trying to <laughs> get her to squat, but she don't like to squat. So I get it. Yeah. You know now she you know she power cleans seventy-five pounds. Wow. Deadlift uh one forty-five. Back squats one thirty-five and. Yeah, she she loves it. And you know, the whole oh, you're gonna stunt her growth. My daughter is like up to my shoulders now at seven. Yeah. So. There's a lot of research against people. I know. Yeah. And, but yeah. It, the myth is always gonna be around, right. I feel it's a, right. a uh way to keep people from taking risks. Right. All right, last one. Uh Brandon Caps wants to know what has helped you keep his coaching at an elite level while your wife has battled cancer. Um Man, that's that that goes with my personal relationship with Christ. You know, um, while she was battling that, you know, I had to be strong, you know, and everybody's telling me, Oh, you need to be strong and you know, for your wife and for your community and for your kids especially, but it's like you you don't know it until you, you, you get in there, you know, and, and it's like just knowing that I have such a mature athlete in Mal that that like I can say, Hey, you know, I gotta be with my wife. I know she's going to get the work done and she, she's okay with it. She's not going to be like, Oh, you know, you're not here. And she doesn't need me by her side. Mm. You know, she, she had texted me, Hey, I got this time on the workout, this time on the workout, you know? And, and it's like, you know, I'm able to, like I said, I'm able to humble myself and, and know, you know, my wife needs me during this time. Hey, Mal, do you understand? Yep. I, I totally understand. I, I get it. It's like it's that dynamic to where I don't have to worry about not being there for an athlete and they catching a fit. Yeah. And I'm not doing the right things. No. It's like God had that all in order to where, you know, I could be strong for my wife and Mal and and I could be strong for Mal by having that trust. Yeah. 
you know, the the coach and athlete trust. So. Yeah, I was kind of caught off guard because I didn't know that until I was reading these questions. Yeah, how is she? How's she doing? She's doing good, man. She's uh she's got two more weeks out of her six week um, um recovery. Um, but you know, it's those three to six months to where she got to go in for the next five years to make sure the cancer doesn't come back. So it's uh it's it's, it's going good, man. It's, it's, she's she's strong. She's stronger than me, you know, to to be able to take something like that head on, yeah. you know, after having our son. And then it, if it wasn't for our son, we would have never found it. Oh, you wouldn't have even known. Wouldn't even know. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And wasn't there a crazy story like that in the NBA, or not like that, but uh, there was a guy who got traded, and then he had to go do his checkup because he got sent to a different team. And so, if he never got traded, he wouldn't have found out during his checkup that he had like some crazy cancer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. it was like, dang, if you didn't get traded, you wouldn't even know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I see one more I want to do. Uh, what makes you go every single day? What gives you that? Fuck it, I'll kick some ass today. Uh, mentality. <laughs> Do you have that mentality? No, I'm, I'm, no. Oh, wrong dude. I think. Well, you gotta ask Mal that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her. You know, I'll let her have it. But um, no, just uh, just knowing that um, I could help you know the next generation um, reach their goals. You know, my my whole motto is you know even even with my kids is to lead them into the future to create a better one. Mm. You know. Um, you know, I need my kids to have a, a better future. I need my kids to have a better world than than what we're living in right now. And and so if, if I could add my salt into it and to let it spread out and become a ripple effect through Mal or through the athletes or like, you know, me to you guys or whatever, then, you know, that's that's my legacy right there. Is is to not just, you know, help myself or help my kids, but you know, it's bigger than me. It's 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 everybody. It's all of us. If we if we all could come together to inspire one another and let it, you know, flow out, then man, praise God. Yeah. And where where do people uh find you and are you offering any coaching right now? Or? Yeah, yeah. They could um you know, you could um go on to brave one gym dot com. Um So that's an in person business but also online, right? Yes, also yeah. online. Uh you could find uh my remote programming on there. Um, shout out to to Phil Muscarella, my other athlete, male athlete. He finished seventy fifth in the in the world. Um, I met him with Hunter yeah. McIntyre. He's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, very cool man. He's he got a bright future. He's How old is he? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah. yeah. Twenty seven. Twenty eight. Yeah. Just raw. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, they, and then also you know you could reach out to me on um, on Instagram at the James Townsend, and uh, yeah. Cool, man. Awesome, man. Well, I'm super grateful that our first non-TTT podcast was you. I feel like uh, I respect you as an athlete, coach, and just general good human. So thanks, brother. Thank you, man.